Hello, it's currently 30 degrees Celsius in this room and yesterday was the hottest day of the year so far. So what better time to make your computer cooler in more ways than one? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back with another CPU cooler video. Today, I have the AMD Wraith Stealth cooler, which ships with the processors such as the 3700. I don't, I don't know. I went on eBay and got this for £13.50 and £4 postage in an effort to make my computer more interesting. It's got heat pipes to carry the heat from the copper base to the, all these fins and maybe that will make it cooler. But most importantly, what will make it cooler is RGB. Whoa. So like my last CPU cooler video, today we're going to run some benchmarks with the current Wraith Stealth cooler and then going to swap over to the Wraith Prism and then run the test again and see if there's any difference between the two coolers. So the Wraith Prism has a four pin fan connector which is pretty standard these days but it also comes with two more cables. These plug into tiny little ports on the other side which is a little like proprietary four pin and then they both go from that to a four pin RGB header for normal RGB and then you also have the same connector but to USB 2. I'm not sure how you would use this to control the RGB but I guess I guess some motherboard software supports USB 2 to control RGB. The tests that I'm going to run today are going to be a little bit different to what I did last time. I have a 12 minute DaVinci Resolve program which we're going to render. It has lots of clips that are speeded up. It's going to really, I've, when I've rendered it before it really makes the CPU hot. So we can actually see if this makes the processor cooler and does that improve performance rather than last time we just saw if it makes it cooler and it didn't. But that was just a thermal paste comparison. This is a whole new cooler, it's a more advanced design so hopefully we're going to see some improvement today. So I started the test beforehand, the CPU temperature was just 50 degrees and it's shot straight up to 80, 81, 80. It's hovering around 80, we'll see what it's done when the video is rendered. So through the test the temperature quickly reached 90 degrees and the time left kept getting pushed back and back and the motherboard clock speed was only about like 3800 megahertz so nowhere near the boost clock of 4.2 gigahertz and yeah it took that took 8 minutes and 36 seconds and it is like a toaster in here so time to change the cooler and see if there's a difference so computer time so what is different between the Wraith Spire and the Wraith Prism is how they attach. I prefer how the Wraith self attaches. You just screw it in straight to the back plate and it has sprung screws. Sprung screws. It's really easy. The Wraith Prism has hooks that attach to clips on pieces of plastic that are screwed onto the motherboard back plate that come with the motherboard but I have taken them off to put the stealth on. So now I have to take the cooler off, take the thermal paste off put the clips on, clean the paste off, and then install this one, and then we can run the tests again. It's finally time to retire it. It's been on there for like three or four months now. Ooh. Exciting. So we're at this stage, gosh this is going to be slightly difficult with the water pipe in the way but it will be fine. This is so much harder than just screwing one on. So yeah, both of the clips are now on, now I just have to pull the tab to um, pop it in. And people on the internet have said this is very stressful. You feel like you're going to break everything. Yeah, it's a very tight fit. Oh, Jesus. There you go. 
That wasn't too bad. I was expecting that to be worse. So, now all I have to do is plug the cables in. Got the fan cable here, gonna pass it through the case and back out so it's as hidden as possible. So, I think the fan cable is definitely shorter than the cable is on the Wraith Stealth. It's a tighter fit, but it looks good. Now I just need the RGB cable. I'm going to use the 4-pin RGB cable because I'm not a weirdo. It wasn't too difficult. I'm going to root this out the same hole as the fan cable and then take it up to the RGB header up there. Now this cable is actually really long. There's kind of too much of it to be honest. I'm just wondering. So it's all back together. It's time to find out if I've broken my computer or not. I haven't, I haven't put the, turned it on. Before I do the benchmark again, I thought I'd install ASRock's RGB utility, ASRock Polychrome Lighting or whatever it's called, and then we can have a look at what fun effects we can do to the cooler. So to summarise, the Wraith Prism on ASRock Polychrome Sync is not very good at all. It only allows you to control the lights on the fan itself. The ring around the fan and the AMD logo you can't change. I should have used the USB cable, which allows you to use the Cooler Master software, where you can like set what rate the LEDs refresh at, and this allows you to create cool effects with an interaction between the fan speed and the speed of the LEDs. So it is still a toasty 29 degrees in here. So with this cooler, we're idling about five degrees lower at the moment which is quite impressive but it might just be because the room's colder even though it feels still very hot in here so let's have a look at the um the test here we go temperatures are climbing up to 80 degrees they're kind of around 75 currently but that's about what it was last time it's only seconds into the test at the moment and we're got about 100 more megahertz currently at 3900 megahertz let's see if it lasts so we're 30 percent through the render now and the temperature has only just hit 80 i think this is doing better okay so we're 66 percent through it's still only about 80 degrees sometimes it dips down to 77 and we're still averaging about 80 more megahertz than we did on the last test which isn't a lot but it's it's some I don't know if it's within the margin of error, but it's some more performance. We'll see if it actually completes quicker than the other one. 10 seconds remaining, 98%. Only still at 80 degrees and still about 70 more megahertz. Yeah. So both videos rendered with the Wraith Stealth, the video rendered in eight minutes and 36 seconds, but with the Wraith Prism, it rendered in seven minutes and 58 seconds. We saved 38 seconds of my life and spent a whole afternoon doing it. So in conclusion, the Wraith Prism does perform better than the Wraith Stealth. This makes sense because the Wraith Stealth is a is rated at 65 watt like the Ryzen 3600, whereas the Wraith Prism is rated at 95 watt for 95 watt processors such as 3700X, which require a better thermal solution such as the Wraith Prism in order to dissipate the extra heat. For a less powerful CPU such as the 3600 for tasks such as video rendering where the CPU is at 100% for several minutes it does reduce the temperature quite a bit by like 10 degrees it allows it to clock a little bit faster to get the task done quicker I'm not sure about the RGB I thought it was more controllable I thought you could control the logo the ring and the fan all separately I'll have to look into that but I'm not sure about the aesthetics at the moment it doesn't sit in the background as much it does it, it, it thinks more of itself but yeah i guess it's an okay upgrade it does slightly boost your performance maybe thank you for watching this has been the lego train station have a good day